note with grave displeasure that your patient has become a Christian. We must make the most of the situation. There is no need to despair. All the habits of the patient, both mentally and bodily, are still in our favor. When the patient is an adult recently reconverted to the enemy's party, like your man, the best thing is to keep him from the serious intention of praying altogether. It is funny how mortals always picture us putting things into their minds, and in reality, our best work is done by keeping things out. Your affectionate uncle, Scrooge. This story is about Screwtape, a demon who is training his young nephew, Wormwood, in the art of tempting their patients, we humans, in order to undermine faith in God Almighty, their enemy, and prevent the formation of virtues. Throughout these letters, Screwtape tries to warn Wormwood from making a fool out of himself, but more importantly, to keep the patient out of the enemy's clutches. I hope you are challenged and impacted by the story as I was. The Screwtape Letters by C. S. Lewis. My dear Wormwood, I am very pleased by what you tell me about this man's relations with his mother. But you must press your advantage, Wormwood. Build up in that house a good settled habit of mutual annoyance, daily thin breaks. When two humans have lived together for many years, it just so happens that each has tones of voice and expressions of face which are almost unendurably irritating to the other. <laughs> Work on that. Bring fully into the consciousness of your patient that particular lift of his mother's eyebrows, which he learned to dislike in the nursery, and make him think how much he dislikes it. And let him assume that she knows how annoying it is, and does it to annoy. He will not notice the immense improbability of the assumption. You will say that these are very small sins. And now, this, like all young tempters, you are anxious to be able to report spectacular wickedness. Do remember, the only thing that matters is the extent to which we separate the man from the enemy. It does not matter how small the sins are. Murder is no better than cards, if cards can do the trick. Indeed, the safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sun turn, without milestones, without side posts. Your affectionate uncle, Scrooge. It is a little disappointing to expect a detailed report on your work and to receive instead such a vague rhapsody as your last letter. You say you are delirious with joy because the European humans have started another of their wars. I see very well what has happened to you. You are not delirious. You are only drunk. Do remember, Wormwood, that duty comes before pleasure. So do not allow any temporary excitement to distract you from the real business of undermining faith and preventing the formation of virtues. I warn you not to hope too much from a war. Suffering is an essential part of what the enemy calls redemption. So that a faith which is destroyed by a war or pestilence cannot really have been worth the trouble of destroying your affectionate uncle, Screwtape. So, my dear Wormwood, your man is in love. Oh, and in the worst kind he could possibly have fallen into. Not just a Christian, but such a Christian. By sneaking, simpering, demure, monosyllabic, mouse like, watery, insignificant, <laughs> virginal, filthy, insipid, two faced little cheat! A little brute, she makes me vomit. Looks as if 
butter wouldn't melt in her mouth, and yet has satirical wit. The sort of creature who'd find me funny. I cheat every way. Oh, then, of course, he gets to know the woman's family. Could you not see that the very house she lives in is one that he ought never to have entered? The whole place reeks of that deadly odor. The very gardener is beginning to acquire it. The dog and cat are tainted with it. <laughs> and a house full of impenetrable mystery. Meanwhile, you disgusting little... United to myself in an indissoluble embrace. Your affectionate uncle, Scruton. My dear Wormwood, you tell me with glee that there is reason to expect heavy air rates on the town where your patient lives. Well, do you not know that bombs kill men? Or do you not realize that the patient's death at this moment is precisely what we want to avoid? He has fallen in love with a very Christian woman, and the various methods of corrupting his spiritual life, which we have been trying, have been so far unsuccessful. If he is killed tonight, he most certainly be lost to us. <sighs> this is so obvious, I'm ashamed to write it. Sometimes I wonder whether you think you were sent into the world for your own amusement. Whatever you do, keep your patient as safe as you possibly can. Your affectionate uncle, <laughs> <laughs> Scrooge. My dear, my very, 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 very dear, Wormwood, my puppet, my pixie, you wormwood. Bombs kill men! You killed him tonight. The patient, your patient, is lost to us. You have let us all slip. How well I know what happened when they snatched him from you. There was a sudden clearing of his eyes as he saw you for the first time and recognized the part you had had in him and knew that you had it no longer. He got through so easily, sheer instantaneous liberation. Did you mark how naturally the earthborn vermin entered the new life? How all his doubts became ridiculous? Oh, defeated, outmaneuvered fool! I think they will give you to me now for a bit of you. If only we could find out what the enemy is really up to. Sometimes I am almost in despair. All that sustains me is the conviction that our realism, our rejection of silly nonsense, must win in the end. Meanwhile, I have you to settle with Wormwood! Most truly, I do sign myself. You're increasingly 